Hello everyone, this is Dan from TCS. Today we're going to be demonstrating to you an installation of the FL4 and the new KA2 into an N-scale caboose. We're going to be going through the full conversion process in this little thing and uh, we're going to be showing you how to set it up and get it rolling as part of your rolling stock and uh, yeah we're going to have fun with it. So this is an Atlas caboose. I've already gone ahead and taken off the hand railings that come up up at the top over the, uh, the ladders. And what we're going to do here is take the rest of it apart, pull the shell off, see what kind of space we have to work with, and work our installation around it. I also have in front of me all the parts that I'm going to need. I have two SMLEDs in the golden white flavor, one in the orange, and I also have four new wheel sets from Fox Valley Models which are designed to work in the Atlas trucks that are on this caboose here. And I also have three 1K ohm resistors with 1 6 watt ratings to go with each one of these LEDs as we install it in here. What we're going to be doing is installing this in a bi-level way. So we'll have one light that's going to light the entire bottom of the caboose one to light the top and then another one the orange one we're going to use as a firebox flicker for the firebox that would be in this caboose all right so without any further ado we're going to dive right into it and we're going to start by first removing the trucks which just have press fit um, compression fitting plugs so they should just pull right out. You can also use a small screwdriver like I have here and potentially get underneath them and pop them right out. And with those apart, what we'll do next is change out the wheel sets with the new ones. And in addition to adding new wheel sets that are going to be metal, we're also going to be adding in wipers as well uh, because we'll need to pick up the power off of the track somehow and that's how we're going to do it. So we also have uh, wheel wipers that we got from Streamline Backshop that we're going to be using for this installation. Alright, so these right here are going to be the wipers that we're going to be using. These are pretty basic. Uh, all that they are is you would install these on the tops of these uh, or the bottom side of these trucks and then bend them inward and then they'll wipe up against the center of the axle here and pick up power. Um, so we'll go ahead and install that and then we'll put our wheel sets in and go from there. And obviously uh, these wheel sets are uh, insulated on one side so when you're putting the wheel sets in you want to make sure that they're lined up on the same side. I'll go ahead and bend this just a little bit on each end. About a 30 to 45 degree angle to make sure it has good compression against the underside of the wheels. through there and to hold it in place we'll reinstall the pin All 
Alright, so now that this one's done, we'll repeat the process for the other one. Alright, so that's the second truck done. So we'll set those aside to install them on later as that's going to be one of the last steps. Um, so then we're going to continue with the disassembly on this. Uh, on this particular model, what we need to do is separate each end here and then the shell removes from the center and then the whole base is one piece. So these ladders and other detail components come with the bottom and need to be removed or detached from the top. So I'm going to take my little screwdriver here and then just gently pull out. On each side. And now that is no longer attached as you can see there. We'll do the same thing for the other side. And that side is detached as well. So by gently spreading this apart, the shell, I should be able to pull down on the frame and it should pop right out. So just like that, pops right off. We have our shell and our frame. As we can see here, the frame is just a large flat piece of metal that they're using to weigh it down. And there's nothing really special about it. We can leave this here. We don't want to remove the weight from the caboose because then it won't be able to pick up power as effectively even though we are going to be including keep lock. So we'll retain this and set it aside for now. Um, in this case, the upper part, the cap on this caboose, is not separated from the bottom, but we want to have separate lighting. So what we'll have to do is put in a piece of cardstock or a small piece of plastic to cover that over and separate it so that the light doesn't cross-pollinate between both chambers. But before we do that, I'm going to remove this by pulling in on these two clips and popping it out so that it's easier to work with. Go ahead and just, yep, easy peasy, that pop right off. And we're going to install then into here one of our golden white LEDs. TCS offers these LEDs with pre-installed wires. Uh, obviously, with these being surface mount, they are incredibly small. Um, so if you're not a confident solderer, then we don't typically recommend working with your own wire. And uh, we do offer these in packs of two and packs of 10. So now that we have the cap removed, what we're going to do is install one of our golden white SM LEDs into the cap. And to do that, I've opted to use hot glue. Um, you can also potentially use other types of glues, but your results may vary. Um, what, I've, what we're gonna do then is we're gonna take the cap and set it here where we can work with it and grab one of our LEDs. So we have our LED and we're going to eject just a small amount of glue from our gun and then take a screwdriver a little flat headed screwdriver like this one here catch a little bit of the glue and then apply it to the back side of the led so i just need a little bit grab it put it on there and then quick stick it in there before it hardens Obviously the little strings you can clean up later, so it's important to be quick before it solidifies.
So now that we have our little LED in here, we can set this aside and wait till later. The next part that we're going to work on is going to be installing one of the other golden white LEDs into the inside of here. And we're going to follow the same process as what we did for the cap, where we grab our LED here with the tweezers. Grab our flat-headed screwdriver. Pick out just a little bit of hot glue. Grab it, dab it, and stick it. And it doesn't take long for this stuff to harden, so you got to be really fast. Because just like that, it's already set. And so now we have those done. The next thing that I wanted to do was install a orange LED right underneath where the firebox would be for this guy. And that's what this one here is for. This is our orange. I'm going to do the exact same thing. We got the tweezers. Got our screwdriver. A little bit of glue. Grab it, dab it, and stick it. All right, and then I'm just going to clean up the extra bit of glue here, and then we're going to wire up our decoder. All right, so our next step is going to be to work with our frame here, and we're gonna have to run wires for the power for the track pickup on the FL4. So to do that, we've got two screws here. We're gonna go ahead and take those out. screws out, we can remove the weight. So we're actually in a bit of luck with this guy. Uh, the screw holes that hold down the weight do go all the way through to the underside as you can see here with this small hole immediately underneath and next to the hole that would be used to hold the truck in. So we can run the wires for the truck powers through these holes and then instead of using the screws to hold the weight down We'll just use some glue and that way we don't have to drill any new holes, which makes our lives a lot easier. So in that case, we're going to grab our FL4 and separate out our black and our red wires, which are going to be for your power pickups, and run them down one through each hole. We'll have to reinstall the weight before we can run our wires. And then we'll grab our FL4 and run our red and our black wires, one through each hole. Right, so now we have our track power wires routed through those holes and we can head back over to our trucks and solder on the wires for each side. Um, so red is going to be used for your right side rail and black is going to be used for your left side rail and this really only matters on DC versus on DCC because on DC the polarity of your track is going to determine if you have directional lighting, which direction is which. So we want to make sure that when we install the trucks, that we make sure that the one with the red wire on it is on the right side rail, and the one with the black wire on it is on the left side. We'll start off by taking our wire and grabbing our wire stripper and stripping off about a 64th of an inch worth of insulation. And we'll do the 
the same thing for the black wire as well. And now that we have that, we'll heat up our soldering iron here and take just a small amount of solder and get ready to tin the wires. When we tin the wires, it's going to shrink back the insulation on the wires just a little bit. So even though we didn't strip off a lot of the insulation from the ends of the wires, the heat from the solder will shrink that back. So we will wind up having more wire and we don't want a lot because the surface that we have to work with is not particularly large. So we don't need a lot of wire and we don't want to create any bulbous joints or uh, have any frayed wires to work with. All right, so now our iron is hot. So what I'll go ahead and do is I'll tin the tip of my iron and then I'm going to bring the iron and the solder together on each wire and now those wires are tinned. With this wire in particular it shrunk the insulation back a little bit more than I was hoping for so what I can do is take my clipper and cut off the excess. And since right now it doesn't matter which one is which, um, we'll go ahead and just take one of the trucks and solder it right in here. These, these power pickups actually have holes in them, which we'll try and route through and solder to. So what I'll do is quick remove this, run my wire through, and I also have this here, a helping hand as we like to call it, that I can use to hold on to the brass strip while we work. And I'm just going to take a little tiny bit of solder here. in my tip and like that this one is soldered on. So I'll go ahead and reinstall this under the truck. And I want to have the wire facing upwards toward the underside of the frame in order to make sure that the wire doesn't have any contact with the wheels, cause any sort of rubbing or anything like that that could either cause harm to the wire or to the wheel set over time. Go ahead and reinstall the pin just to keep everything in place. And that's one truck down and one to go. So we'll repeat that process for this truck. I got to make sure that it's turned the opposite direction so that they don't short out and we don't have power pickup from both rails on the same side. So once again, I'll put my brass tab here in my helping hand, run the wire through the hole, grab just a little bit of solder here in my tip and that one's done as well this one I noticed sticks up a little bit it has a little extra nub on here that we don't want so I'll go ahead and grab my clippers and just knock that little nub right off of there. Now that that's done, I can install this wiper back in to the wheel set. So the next thing that we're going to work on is connecting all the lights up. And since we already have them glued onto their respective surfaces, 
what we're gonna do then is cut down all the wires. We're going to install our resistors and we're going to then wire everything up and finally button it all back together. So what I'm gonna do is start off with my resistors. I like to tin, clip and tin them before I work with them. It makes them a lot easier to work with. Now once again, make use of my little helping hand here and just clip off most of the lead on each side. And then I'll grab my iron, tin my iron, and then just put a little bit of solder on each end. And I'll repeat this process for each of the three resistors. <laughs> 